January the 31st, 2022. Guys, you're looking at what we call the CME tracker. And what you're looking at are two graphs on the right that have green lines. And they represent the Earth both in the thickness or the density of the plasma on the top chart and the bottom green chart where it says Earth is radial velocity. And that is solar wind speed. You can see it's going to jump up from its average of 300 to around 400 and uh, it's going to stay that way for a couple of days. We're going to have a major to moderate geomagnetic uh, storm. But at the top graph, the plasma density, the thickness of this cloud is very strong. Notice that how quickly it jumps up above 30. Uh, this is centimeters cubed. It's a sharp, steep line there. What has happened is this sunspot, 2936, guys, which is the probably the largest of this solar cycle which is we're going into uh, the beginning of solar cycle 25 and because of the opposite colors it's telling us we have opposite polarities in these magnetic fields and that's when they arc together and we get the larger cmes and solar flares the solar flare will cause the coronal mass ejection and that's what we're looking at now it says a long duration flare measuring m11 was observed around AR 2936 peaking at 2329 UC January 29th. Minor R1 level radio blackout affected the Pacific Ocean region of Earth. A further update will be provided for CME is associated. And what we saw is now they are tracking that C, uh, CME. And the blast was picked up on Lasco C2. And these are images. Notice uh, just after midnight uh, going from the 29th to the 30th. 126 UTC time. You can see this is coming from Lasco C2 that is between the Earth and the Sun and gives us these Earth facing uh, Earth facing perspectives. You can see the explosion very clearly, and uh, the CME tracker has it pretty much centered at our planet as far as direction, and because it's slightly higher than the equator of the Sun, the it may not be as direct of a hit. But guys. When we're dealing with grand solar minimum, what is the key word here? Weak shields. And uh, when we have solar flares and CMEs, they affect our planet a lot greater than when we're in grand solar minimum, uh, excuse me, grand solar maximum, which is generating so much energy, it expands our shields just like a radiation field, electromagnetic field around a motor. The... Um, if you measure it, the electric motor, and you can even do it with a voltmeter, but the as you turn it up, the magnetic field around the motor strengthens and, and broadens out. Same way with the Earth. But when the sun is weak or the voltage to the motor is weak, that uh, electromagnetic field is weak also. So what happens? And there's new scientific data out to back this out, <coughs> back this up that just came out today, and we've been talking about it for a long time. Is that if you have these solar events, something happens during grand solar minimum with weak shields, again, the impact can be greater. And they are now have evidence that nearly 10,000 years ago, this occurred during, grand, during solar minimum, during the minimum of a cycle. And was devastating. It would have wiped out all the electronics on Earth. Um, radiation would have been immense. And I'll show you. You think. And you say. Let me back up. You say. Well how could they measure a solar flare nearly 10,000 years ago. And um, with any accuracy at all. Would It just so happens. And we'll look at part of that article. That. Um, we And we talked about another thing. is During solar minimum. The. Shields are weak, more energy from the sun pours into the core of our planet, and we have the volcanoes and earthquakes. Then that, And they have measured volcanic ash when they drill through the ice and look at the ice layers of the uh, minimums, the, like the modern minimum, the mini ice age, things like that. They can see thicker ice, uh, thicker gray levels in that ice, and it's like rings on a tree. They can count the years back. What they've done... Now is they have learned how to measure a CME impact on our planet. What happens is you've got a lot of radiation involved. And when that happens, radioisotopes bombard our planet. And 
what they did was measure ice cores. They measured the radioisotope with uh, meters that measure that, with you know, measures radiation, but radioisotope measurements in ice cores. It wasn't quite 10,000. We'll look at the article uh, very close to that. And there was a great uh, concentration of radioisotopes in that certain year, enough to take out every satellite, all the electronics, which were not, as far as we know, there were none. But now the sky and space is littered with satellites. And our communications system on Earth, everything from navigation for planes and ships and cars to the Internet, uh, name it, everything now depends on electricity. And I've talked about, if you guys remember, look, it, three or four months ago, maybe longer than that now, about the healing in Malachi 4.1, the healing wings of Shemesh. And what I said then, and this, is, this article we're talking about just came out today, what I said then was God has a way that if we endure, no matter how bad the tribulation of man, that means created by man, and we see these men that they're talking about, in charge of the planet right now but the way the way that that will be stopped in my opinion and uh, is the healing wings of Shemesh which is son not son of God it's the son translated properly in Hebrew and so as God sees this control over mankind through the various power towers let's say that uh, for different communication methods different satellite configurations all uh, evolving, uh, evolving around artificial intelligence. It requires electricity, all of it, the control, manipulation, every bit of it. And but after we read the article, you'll understand a little more about it. But now there's proof that that can happen, and it can happen with utter devastation during solar minima. Now, this is from space.com. It's about... Brandon Spector, it says it was published about six hours ago, but it was early this morning. It says an ancient solar storm smashed Earth at the wrong part of the sun cycle, and scientists are concerned. Think about what's the wrong part. It's the solar minimum, because normally you would have these events during solar maximum. We were in solar maximum when the X flare struck uh, Japan and caused the Fukushima quake says the 92,000-year-old storm left researchers with a stark conclusion. We are not ready for the next one. And guys, think about this coming out now, what we've talked about in the past, and the only way that in, some, um, in many arenas that we can win and that the weapons of the enemy will not overcome us is an event like this. I've said it for really for many years. But now we're starting to see everything come together. An extremely powerful solar storm pummeled our planet 9,200 years ago, leaving permanent scars on the ice buried deep below Greenland and Antarctica, both poles. A new study of those ancient ice samples has found that this previously unknown storm is one of the strongest outbursts of solar weather ever detected and would have crippled modern communication systems if it had hit Earth today. But perhaps most surprising, the massive storm appears to have hit during a solar minimum, the point during the sun's 11-year cycle when solar outbursts are typically much less common, according to the study. Now, it's actually 11.8 years in this solar cycle, and it matches the complete orbit of our sun's binary twin, Jupiter that the ancients call Nibiru, that once, if you study, I've got videos up for years, that the scientists have now did a tracking method on a collapse into the inner solar system of Jupiter and a few of its moons. It wiped out the fifth planet between Mars and Jupiter and is now the asteroid belt. It picked up a lot more moons, too. The gravity of Jupiter did It was it, as it pulled back out something very interesting if you haven't uh, heard about it there's information there I've got videos 
and uh, different articles out about the ancients called Jupiter, Nibiru. And if you think about it, guys, it makes perfect sense. Everybody says whether, and this is going to be controversial in the comments, I understand it. Planet X is out there, it's coming. You can see it on your cell phone. Well, guys, if you understand that the ancients, we're talking about the Anunnaki, the Sumerians, Jupiter was Nibiru, okay? And it, again, it makes perfect sense on what happens. And it could be that because Jupiter is so large, and I b still believe it's the sun's binary twin that never fully ignited or it went out. And possibly during that time that it went out, then there was a great pull from our sun. And as our sun pulled Jupiter in, we saw the crippling effects of interplanetary collisions. More than likely, according to legend, that's how our moon was also formed. Because of this unexpected discovery, the study researchers are concerned that devastating solar storms could hit when we least expect them and that Earth might not be prepared when the next big one arrives. And we don't know when that will happen. But when we see the return, we see the angels pour vials out upon the sun and the skies are darkened because of the return. That is going to take out everything. But what could happen is the angel that poured out his vial upon the sun could be the uh, lead attack. And when I can foresee with AI how much control of even down to thought level, reactions, sickness, disease could be controlled that way. Full tracking, full everything, full control via the newer link satellite systems or the Starlink satellite systems also by Musk but uh, the way that that would be stopped the way that those healing wings of Shemesh would occur as in Malachi uh, 4 it's only four uh, chapters guys you should read it last book in the Old Testament the way that will occur those healing wings and when you put that in and the healing wings would be if you saw a full halo solar burst coming at you. Wiping out all of that AI control that is over man. And uh, then the frequency of God comes through those natural alpha and beta cycles. That all of this electromagnetic interference and uh, internet interference and control is making life miserable. Causing a lot of problems. That will be wiped out in that pure cycle where God is sealing the people with his message. That will occur then. So guys, the way things are going now, we may not be too far from that. We're watching it. You watch it. It's a heads up. Be safe.